Hello and welcome to another Imperator Rome Dev Diary video. So yesterday I made the video about the buildings teaser that Johan had put on the forums and on Twitter and it teased more than just the buildings. So for reference, um, what he did was he showed off the new buildings. There was going to be 15 new, sorry, 15 buildings in total, so 11 new buildings and a couple of them had interesting modifiers about population manipulation. And uh, at the end of that teaser, there was obviously, stay tuned for tomorrow's dev diary where we're going to the population mechanics. Lo and behold, the population mechanics have been unveiled. So here we go. Hello everyone, and welcome to another dev diary for Imperta. In the Cicero update, we're changing the instant population manipulation mechanics, say that 10 times fast, uh, to become a simulation over time that you can nudge. I'm very pleased with that change. Um, that that should be how pop should have been done forever because that's just the way it works. Um, so pop movement and migration. Slaves from near neighboring cities or cities within the same province can still be moved manually into a city for a cost, somewhat similar to before. Um, good stuff. I hope that the cost, at least for slaves, would be gold. Um, because that makes sense to me that, you know, the if the state wants slaves to be in a different location, then they are paying the owners of said slaves and then moving them themselves. Um, and the reason the cost wouldn't be astronomical is because they would then sell them on in the next city, maybe, something like that. But either way, I, I think gold would be the best uh, currency to use for that. This will also be possible for tribesmen if you are a migratory tribe. I don't think gold really works for tribesmen. Maybe the new political influence would be better for that. I'm not sure. Either way, he doesn't say what the cost is, uh, so speculation is all we've got at the moment. Each city can also have one pop migrating at a time. If the migration attraction in a city is X more than that of another city, then migration can happen to it if three conditions. The destination city is a neighbor of the origin city, so being adjacent. The destination city is in the same province as the origin city. Um, then we've got the origin city and the destination city are both in provinces with ports in the same country. Uh, so we could see quite a lot of pops moving around. I think it's going to be something to really balance. Um, because if I, I feel like there is going to be quite a lot of pops being moved to borders um, because if you think about it um, migration can happen across borders even if they're in different countries and pops can move uh, to any location within a province so I, I think you're gonna end up with quite a lot of pops being moved to the borders although if the interior of a province is more uh, better off, let's say, more attractive for migration, you might end up seeing pops from, say, this green one, this is Samnium, I think, um, moving to, say, Vesinth, and then again after that moving to uh, Velcal afterwards, if Velcal is, is much more attractive. Either way, I, I think there's just going to be an awful lot of interesting population movement. It'd be nice if you could just track it. I, I don't think that's going to be possible, but I guess if a pop ends up here and he is of a culture that is very, very different, um, then you could, you know, find out that, oh, he's he's probably from this place and he probably came along this route, etc., etc. Uh, I think roads would be great to have as a sort of a smoothing effect on migration. So if there's a road going from A to B, then migration would happen a bit more quickly along that route. That would be pretty cool. Either way, let's move on. Um, which pop is picked for migration will be random, but a slave will never be picked unless the city is over its population capacity and the slave is not required for a holding. Uh, a pop that is currently migrating cannot be picked for promotion, assimilation, or conversion, as it will only be picked for starvation if it's the last existing pop in the city. All right, that sounds pretty cool. Um, with it never being a slave, that makes sense. Like, slaves 
wouldn't migrate on their own. They're they're owned, right? It's their owner that is is choosing where they go. Um, so yeah, that makes sense to me. Um, pop that is currently migrating cannot be picked for promotion, assimilation, or conversion because these are also automatic. Anyway, let's let's move on. Uh, the speed of migration is increased or decreased by modifiers, such as a city being looted or a certain governor policy being used. Uh, I'd like to see more depth on this. Um, you know, Johan, give, give us a bit more. These are only two different mo uh, modifiers. I want more. Is there a road? Uh, is there a much higher pop cap in the destination? Is it got more civilization value? Uh, these kind of things. Has it got more buildings? Um, has it got a more attractive trade good? All this kind of thing would be really nice to see. So pop promotion. If the population of a certain pop type is below 33% in a given city, then a random pop is picked for promotion. This pop will then over time start promoting to the underrepresented pop type. The speed of promotion will be dependent on modifiers as well as using the social mobility governor policy. So basically it's like social mobility is permanently on and this will, I guess, make it go faster, um, which is fine by me. I, I like the governor policies and having all of them still exist, but make their effects happen more rapidly but they're already happening automatically at the same time. That that's great. That's that's fantastic. That's what I want to see. So pop assimilation and conversion. Similarly to pop promotion assimilation and conversion. Um, con sorry, yeah. Pop similarly to pop promotion assimilation and conversion will happen. That's worded wrong. But conversion uh, will happen to one selected pop at a time. No, wait, it's not written wrongly, or it sort of is. There should be a comma here. Similar to pop promotion, assimilation and conversion will happen to one selected pop at a time. Unlike the other two, there will always be one pop chosen as long as there are pops in the non-state religion or culture. The speed at which conversion takes place is dependent on a number of local and national modifiers. Uh, however, which means that the de facto pop might not be assimilating or converting. Okay, that seems fine. Uh, speed at which conversion takes place is dependent on number of local and national modifiers. Um, okay, so maybe these modifiers mean that they can't promote or convert at all. That seems to be what I'm reading. Um, yeah, more more modifiers. Let me know the modifiers. Uh, as you can see below, the pop interface is in the process of being completely reworked for Cicero. So let's have a look at this UI. Is it easy to read? Is it easy to understand? Um, nobody's migrating away. Let's have a look here. You're migrating to Ostia, but nobody is migrating away, but it says that it is. I'm not sure I totally understand this UI. It's gonna have to be something I look into a bit more. Okay, okay. Yeah, I, I'm not really understanding this, this UI just yet, but again, I haven't played with it, so... It could be pretty easy to understand once you actually get your hands on it. I don't know. Um, as the impact of governor policies now scales with finesse, you need a really good governor and perhaps a few special buildings to be able to convert or, and assimilate uh, with another dominant religion and culture. So, pop conversion... Speed base is one, religious conversion plus nine percent. Dominant religion is not state religion. Okay, so that lowers, that, that's what it was on about up here. Um, if the dominant religion and culture is not of the primary, it's going to slow it down. Uh, so this is gonna be very useful for, say, your capital when it's taking in foreign slaves. Your capital is gonna obviously be uh, probably your most populated city. It's going to have your primary culture, your primary religion, and that's going to help ease the wheels or smooth the grease or whatever um, of getting those foreign slaves promoted to, you know, your own culture, your own religion. So that makes sense. I like it. It's a good way of making it not be a case of, you know, I've conquered all this area and now if I just wait, everyone's going to be my religion and culture. Yeah, no, that's really good. That's that's a smart way of doing it. I like it. Uh, you can still manually move slaves as you like between cities for a price in gold. Oh, perfect. 
Uh, but the UI has been completely changed, so instead of selecting a pop then a target, you instead go to the city you want slaves in and select what type of pop you want and its origin uh, and click for as many as you want in the same UI. That makes more sense. That That's a lot less clicking. Instead of three clicks or four clicks per pop to move, it's, I guess, three clicks for the first pop and then one click for each pop after that. No, I like it. That, that's... Uh, yeah, no, I like that. That's good. That's good. Considering you can't move, or it seems like you can't move citizens, freemen, and um, then, yeah, this makes a lot more sense to have it this way. I like it. That's good. And that's the end of the dev diary. So, um, not a very long one, but huge, huge impact to the game. Um, pops are now more lifelike. As I said, my second video ever was static, lifeless pop mechanics. Not anymore. Not anymore at all. This is incredibly... It's, it's an incredible improvement to the game, in my opinion. This gives the game more life. So you're not playing a game, you're, you're actually managing a country. And the pops aren't just numbers, they're actual things. Uh, actual people that move around naturally or... And, and stuff like that. That That's really, really good to see. I love it. Um, so I, I commented on this thread. Um, I was the first one to comment, yay. Um, and I made this suggestion. So these are the three um, options, or not options, but three conditions for migration. And I suggested this fourth one. Uh, if there's a trade route between two provinces with a port, and it does not have to be in the same country. So what this would mean for the game is, say, uh, Rome was trading with Massalia. And uh, obviously the Roman port in Latium, I think, is Ostia. Uh, so if Ostia is trading with Massalia, there would be some kind of migration happening between those two countries, even though they don't border, even though they have... Um, you know, they're not the same country, because there is trade going on there, maybe some people are hopping on those boats and moving into Ostia from Massalia because they want to. It would also mean that trade as a smaller nation or a tribal nation would be a little bit more dangerous because you don't want your people thinking that they can make a better life in a better country. So I like it, and that, that, would, be, that would also add some more life to it. If your pops are really unhappy with you because your country is a flaming garbage heap and you start trading with somebody else, they could think, you know what, I kind of like the idea of fucking off over there. That, that adds flavor, that adds life and character. And I like that idea and I really hope they add it in. But even if not, this is still fantastic. But I want to know what you guys think. Do you agree with me? Do you think this is a huge improvement to the game? that adds a lot of flavor and character and life and all that kind of, all those adjectives that I said before. Do you agree with me? Uh, let me know in the comment section below and uh, maybe even leave a like if you uh, enjoyed this video. But I want to thank you all very much for watching and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.